Hey, this is Joe Hartman with Intraoperative Neuromonitoring and Sentient Medical. This is the seventh video in the CNIM Crash Course series. And last time we were going over some electrical component stuff. We are going to continue on with that. Uh, this is about to get into some, some more heavy stuff. Before we talk about high frequency filters and low frequency filters, we might as well make sure we know the most common uh, components of electricity. So this mini quiz, on the right side you have uh, some electrical components and on the left side you have the abbreviations that you will find in equations that they might be giving you on the test. So go ahead and pause this video right now and see if you can correctly line them all up. Okay, we're gonna go ahead right now. And these, this is the answers for those. So you'll see there's definitely some overlap and you have to know all the nomenclature or you're gonna be staring at the equation and not know where to go with it. Electrical quantities are associated with all circuits. The most common ones are voltage, resistance, amperage, wattage, and conductance. And we'll go into each of those a little bit further. First is voltage, uh, abbreviated E or V. The voltage applied by the source causes current to flow through the circuit. The unit of measurement for voltage is volts. Voltage is represented by two abbreviations, E and V. The E is derived from the term electromotive forces. This is the, uh, the older term that's not used that much anymore. The E is used to indicate voltage in mathematical calculations. V is used to indicate the unit of measurement for volts. For example, E equals 10 volts. Amperage, uh, abbreviated I or A. The amount of current that flows through the circuit is affected by the quantity of the source voltage. If the voltage is increased by two, the current will double. The unit of measurement for current is amperage. Amperage is represented by I and A. The I is used to indicate current in mathematical uh, calculations. The letter I is derived from the word intensity. A is used to indicate the quantity of current in amperage or amps. For example, the intensity equals 10 amperage. Resistance is R or the omega sign. The amount of current that flows in a circuit is also affected by the resistance of the light bulb. If the resistance of the bulb doubles, the current is reduced to half. Resistance is represented by two abbreviations, the English letter R and the Greek letter omega, which stands for omega. R is used to indicate resistance in a mathematical calculation, where the omega sign is used to indicate quantity of resistance in ohms. For example, the resistance is 10 ohms. Conductance. The opposite of resistance is conductance. It is defined as a, the ease at which current flows. Conductance is represented by two abbreviations, G and S. G is used to indicate the conductance in mathematical calculations, where S is used to indicate the quantity of conductance, which is uh, Siemens. For example, G equals 0 0.01 Siemens. Power. The, as current flows through the bulb in a circuit, it, its filament gets hot enough to glow and gives off light. The bulb consumes energy called power as it is heated. Two abbreviations are used to represent power dissipated by the bulb, which is P and W. P is indicate the power of the mathematical calculation, where W is used to indicate the unit of measurement for the power in watts. For example, power equals 10 watts. Inductance. Inductance opposes a charge in current flow measured in Henry's. As current flow changes within an inductor, EMF is induced. This self-induced EMF polarity opposes the change in current that produces it. This reaction is sometimes referred to as self-inductance. And then we have some pictures at the at the bottom here where it shows uh, the different kind of electrical components we're talking about, like inductance or resistance uh, measured in current. Uh, you can just go through those videos and see how it is when they're uh, used differently on the batteries. When things are set up, they can be set up in, in different circuits. So we can have a, a simple circuit, a parallel circuit, or a series of circuit. In a series circuit, the current through each of the components is the same. The voltage across the current is the sum of the voltages across each component. And that would be the picture that's in the, the right side. That's the battery. They are both in the same area uh, in its voltage across each component. In the parallel circuit, the voltage across each of the components is the same, and the total current is the sum current through each component. So the parallel one is on the left there. In the series circuit, every device must function for the circuit to be complete. 
one bulb burning out in the series circuits breaks the circuit, so that's just like your Christmas lights. In parallel circuits, each light has its own circuit, so all the all but the one light could be burned out and the last one will still function. Background information. The difference between a high pass filter and a low pass filter is the source of the output potential to be fed to the amplifier. The high pass filter develops its output potential across resistor R, whereas the low pass filter develops its output potential across the capacitor C. So if we look at the effective circuit on the left side, we have a low uh, frequency filter or a high pass filter. On the right side, that's using the capacitance, the resistor, and the resistor the capacitance is the high frequency filter or low pass filter. And then in the bottom left, uh, well, the abbreviations are above it, but we can see resistors set up in series and resistors set up in parallel. So that goes back to the previous slide, how they can be set up. High frequency and low frequency filters. Resistors and inductors in series add together. Conductors in series add reciprocally. So we can see the high frequency uh, filter set up in resistors in series. And that equation ends up being the total sum of those R's is R1 plus R2 plus R3. Whereas the low frequency filter resistance is set up in parallel. The sum of that is 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus 1 divided by R3. Resistors and inductors in parallel add reciprocally, and conductors in parallel add together. So when we're talking about conductors, uh, it's the, the opposite. So remember, mathematically, conductance is the reciprocal or inverse of resistance. So conductance equals 1 over resistance, and resistance equals 1 over conductance. The greater the resistance, the less the conductance, and vice versa. This should make intuitive sense, resistance and conductance being opposite ways to denote the same essential electrical polarity. So we have the R total is less than R1, R2, R3, or R3 individually. Uh, this mathematical sum is 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4, or the R total is 1 over that entire string there. Whereas conductance is greater than G1, G2, G3, G4 individually because G, uh, conductance set up in this uh, parallel is additive, so we have G1, G2, G3, and G4. Resistors in a series for the high frequency filters. So R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So if the resistance of one was two ohms, resistance of number two was four ohms, and the resistance of three was six ohms, the current intensity would be 20 amps. Uh, if we wanted to know what the voltage would be, then we would apply that to Ohm's law. So Ohm's law uh, is V equals I over R, or intensity over resistance. Our intensity, which we just found to be 20 amps, and resistance would be the 2 ohms plus 4 ohms plus 6 ohms. So we have 20 amps over 12 ohms, or the voltage is 1.67 volts. So that could easily be a question. Maybe not so complex where there's two separate parts to the equation, but knowing how to work through each uh, equation will get you to that final answer. Notice that when resistors are in series, it is equal to the sum. So it's going to be larger than the number of any single resistor. So you just have to keep that straight in your head where resistors and capacitors are the opposite. Resistors in series are additive. Resistors in parallel is going to be less than the uh, original resistance. And here's resistors in parallel, which we see in low frequency filters, whereas resistors in series we see in high frequency filters. 1 over the resistor to resistance total equals that equation there. It can go out and how, depending on how many resistors you have. So if we're giving a voltage of 50, resistance of 1 equals 3, kil uh, 3 ohms, resistance 2 equals 4 ohms, resistance 3 equals 5 ohms, what is the current intensity? Resistance in series equals R total over 1 divided by all the resistors added together uh, over 1 or our total equals 1 over 20 divided by 60 plus 15 divided by 60 plus 12 divided by 60, 
or our total equals 1 over 47 plus 60 because 20 plus 15 plus 12 equals 47 or the R total equals 60 over 47 because we had that uh, we just bring the, the denominator to the top there or the R total equals 1.28 ohms if we apply that to ohms law we now have I equals VR or intensity equals 50 volts divided by 1.28 eight ohms equals 39 amps. So notice that when resistors are in parallel, it is a fraction of any single resistor. So it's going to be smaller than any single resistor. So what that bottom sentence is doing is making sure you memorize uh, what resistors and parallels equation is, but also if they give you a number and you come up with an answer and it is not, uh, if it's smaller than your original resistor, then you're probably on the right path. If it's larger, then you know you've had some kind of calculation error. Capacitors in parallel, opposite of resistors in parallel. So for the high frequency filters, capacitor values add normally when connection in parallel, but add in reciprocal when connections in series, exact opposite of resistors. For example, if three capacitors of value of 0 0.1 uh, micro, and I honestly forgot what F is, 0.022 UFs and 0.01 UFs are connected in parallel. The total capacitance would be uh, capacitor equals capacitor 1 plus 2 plus 3. Add those three sums together and you get 0.13. Note that the total parallel capacitance is always greater than the largest capacitance. And then for low frequency filters, that if three capacitors are connected in series, however, they add in reciprocals. So again, the same equations, just opposite of, of the resistance. When adding together capacitors in parallel, they must all be converted to the same capacitance units, whether it is UF or nano Fs or PFs. Also, we can see that the current flow through the total capacitance value CT is the same as the total circuit current IOT. We can also define the to total capacitance of the parallel circuit from the total stored columns charge using the Q equals CV equation for charge on the capacitor plates. The total charge or QT stored on all the plates equals the sum of the individual stored charges on each capacitor. So therefore Q total equals Q one, two, and three, but Q equals the uh, CV. So if QT equals CVT equals CV1 plus 2 plus 3, or CT equals C123. So here is that long drawn out equation. Uh, if you'd like to go ahead and go through that, you can pause the video now. So here's another question. Please solve for this uh, diagram giving the resistance. Go ahead and pause the video. And here's the equation where we found that it is in parallel. Here's the next equation. Enter your answer in the line provided. And we use Ohm's law to find out it is one milliamp. Ohm's law explained a little bit further. When a resistor R is connected to the voltage generator V, the current I flowing in the circuit is com computed from Ohm's law. Ohm's law requires one volt of push to move one amper of current through one ohm of resistance and can be re represented by the Ohm's law equation. I is current or the movement of electrons and is measured in amperes. So milliamp is uh, one milliamp is equal to uh, one amp over a thousand or micro is one over a million. Voltage or the force that moves electrons through a conductor is measured in volts and we use millivolts and microvolts very common. So just make sure that you're able to move through the uh, milli and microvolts and milliseconds and microseconds and all that and kilo ohms and ohms. Resistance is or R is resistance, the opposite, opposition to direct current flow and is measured in ohms. Some common multiple units are the kilo ohms and mega ohms. So kilo ohms we typically see when we're talking about impedance checks. 
this mega ohms, the only place I think I've seen it is when we're talking about uh, transcranial Doppler. Power, the power dissipated by the resistor is equal to the voltage multiplied by the current. So if intensity is measured in amps and volts in MV and volts, then the power is in watts. By plugging in different forms of Ohm's law, we can rewrite Ohm's law is power equals I over V. And from there, when they give you uh, specific information, you can use that equation to uh, further figure things out where P equals I squared over R or P equals V squared over R. How much heat is lost if the impedance is good or 5,000 ohms and the current is 10 milliamps? So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure that out. Okay. It is about half a watt. So if power equals intensity squared times R, then 10 milliamps squared times 5,000 ohms or 0 0.01 amperage squared times 5,000 or 0 0.0001 times 5,000 is 0.5 watts. Inductors, a coil also known as an inductor or electromagnetic uh, source is a, a device that generates a magnetic field when a current flow it, is in it. Physically, it consists of a coil of wire that may be wrapped around the magnetic coil core. So an inductor in series is LT equals L1 plus L2 out to how many uh, inductors are in a row. Inductors in parallel, just as inductors in series behave as resistors in series, inductors in parallel behave like resistors. So remember that resistors is opposite of uh, capacitors and resistors are the same as inductors as far as these equations are concerned. Transistors in amplification. So these control the transfer of electric charge across a resistor, the outer layer are emitter and the collector. The middle layer is the base. A small controlling voltage applied to the base governs the flow of much large current from collector to emitter. Stages of amplification allow for a wave usable for analog pen deflection or used by differential software. A notch filter is a bandpass filter around the power line's frequency 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, we can see that in this example, it's right around 60 hertz, and it has a very uh, imperfect slope. I mean, ideally, it would be just that 60 hertz, but you can see it has a, a slope out where we get a certain percentage of other frequencies, which is why notch filter ends up being uh, not so great to use for the majority of the potential to use. Smoothing. Smoothing algorithm allows for the averaging of neighboring data points, thereby creating a new data point at each digitized point. Rarely do wave components become apparent after smoothing that could not be detected beforehand. Excessive smoothing may eliminate fast components of interest or lose the detail of the wave. When excessive high frequency artifact interferes with the wave component identification, multiple smoothings may be useful. The larger the smooth width, the greater the noise reduction, but also the greater the possibility that the signal will be distorted by the smoothing operation. So this is a, uh, I know at least on Cadwell, this is something we can use to make the wave look prettier, but we also need to make sure that we're not sacrificing amplitude, height, or loss of uh, some smaller far field signals in order to just have a nice pretty picture on our, our screen. Averaging, the stimulus dependent portion of the signal or the evoke potential or nerve action potential are similar in amplitude and latency in each epoch averaged and appears in the average results, whereas the stimulus independent or the random portion of the signal, which is the noise or background neuronal activity among others, differ substantially from epoch to epoch and are suppressed by averaging. The suppression factor, which often is called the signal to noise ratio for truly random signals is the square root of N, where N is the number of epochs. So I've gone over averaging and I've gone over signal to noise ratio and suppression factor uh, a lot. So you should, be pretty familiar with that going into the exam now. Rejection levels, artifact, automatic artifact rejection is common on most machines. It will reject activity that exceeds the limit of the AD conversion and or some adjustable percentage. Amplifier gains should be set so that 10 to 20% of the total samples are rejected. 
rejection rates too low will average unwanted artifact, but uh, but you also need to the gain low enough to allow for utilization of the full range of voltage in the AD converter. Okay, so that is it for these electrical components. Uh, that for me, at least, that is the toughest section. It is also the driest section. It's hard to focus and study on, but those will pop up on the test. Those are the ones that people that take the test are always complaining about. Um, so just make sure you put in some time. I did have some pretty uh, detailed mathematical equations on there. I do not think it's going to get that far into it. Uh, but if you're able to do those, you should be able to handle anything they throw at you. Uh, I've been showing you some different things on the website to make sure you utilize. Uh, this is more of a pitch for you to help me help other people find out about this. So if you are on LinkedIn or Facebook and you want to give likes or on uh, LinkedIn, please leave a, a, a testimonial if you find all this helpful. Those things will uh, allow others to be more uh, willing or to try this out or to test it out. I mean, it's free. There's no real risk to doing it. But just getting the word out there and, and making sure everybody in the IOM community at least has a fair shake at passing the CNIM and trying to get those pass rates up a little bit better. All right, that's it for this recording. Thank you for the testimonials, and we'll see you on the next video.